Welcome back to the Adventurous Spirit Podcast. We are burning up today with our season one finale. <laughs> Cheers! Oh man, I cannot believe we are here. As you may know, we are a full-time traveling show, which means our studio also changes depending on where our travels take us. Like being here in this amazing hot tub with this gorgeous mountain view right behind us. We've been so grateful to share our show with you and this first amazing season. Which is why today we'll be recapping where our adventures have taken us this season. New Mexico! We have an action-packed season finale planned for all of you where we're dissecting the top four most amazing places in New Mexico. And make sure to stick around to the end of this episode to find out where we're at right now. So we're going to be giving you exactly where to stay, what to do, and where to eat. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, follow along, and let's go on a journey through New Mexico. Do you smell that? What's burning? I'm burning. That's why we had to get out of that jacuzzi. We were burning up in there, it's but oh hot. my gosh, it was so nice. I mean, we'll get back in later. Don't worry about that. You can count on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's burning? The part of the show where we discuss hot topics and burning questions. And today we are talking about the history and culture of New Mexico. Very fitting. Very fitting. I know. I know. It's all coming together. It's all part of the presentation. So humans have been traced back to have inhabited New Mexico all the way back to 9200 BCE. Otherwise known as back in the day. Humans have been living here and thriving here for a very, very long time. The beautiful landscape and amazing ecosystem of New Mexico consists of grass covered plains, forested mountains, glaciated peaks, and lava fields. New Mexico is best known for its arts, heritage, and of course, the green chili. Now, we're gonna talk about the top four best places to experience and explore in New Mexico. Let's do it. So coming in at number one is good old Albuquerque. That's actually where we've stayed this past season. In Albuquerque. Yeah. It's been our home for the past three months, and as we're gonna miss it, we're pretty excited to hit the road and see where the road takes us next. Adventure is out there. So now let's talk about what to do when you're in Albuquerque, because I feel like Albuquerque kind of gets a bad rap. It's such a funny sounding city that most people don't think much is going on here. It seems like the butt of a lot of jokes, but we've had a lot of fun. There is a lot of stuff to do here. You can take a hot air balloon ride. Albuquerque is basically the hot air balloon capital of the world, and there's pretty much a balloon in the air every day day, all year round, even in the winter months, really get a unique, breathtaking view of Albuquerque. It's just one of the coolest ways to travel, really. Next, you should try stopping at the Natural History Museum. Albuquerque does have a very dense history from dinosaurs to lava field petroglyphs, and their Natural History Museum has some great displays and a pretty sweet planetarium. Next up, you should check out the Sandia Peak Tramway. Now, this is basically a big gondola ride that takes you from the foothills of the Sandia Mountains all the way up to the very top where there's a ski resort and you get the most breathtaking view probably in all of New Mexico. You're looking at the edge of the world, baby. And that leads us into our next topic, where to eat. If you do take the Sandia Peak Tramway all the way up to the top of the mountain, part of the ski resort is the 10-3 restaurant, which is a very, very fine dining establishment. And again, on top of a mountain, the best views you'll ever get while getting served really, really good food. And although like the altitude, the prices are quite high, but it's worth every penny. Go up to the top there and you'll have a, a whole new found respect for the beauty that is New Mexico. And lastly, check out Tin Can Alley. This is a very cool, unique place for those of you that can't agree on one restaurant to go out to. Kate's gonna have pizza. Chris is gonna have barbecue. Casey's gonna get a burger at the burger joint and I'm gonna get some uh, Asian cuisine the beauty of the Tin Can Alley. Tin Can Alley is a food court style restaurant and brewery featuring all local eateries so everyone can find something that they want and still enjoy dinner together in a very fun setting. And you get to support local. And literally the place is made out of shipping containers. So it's it's nothing but photo opportunities too. It's a fun art exhibit as well. It's a great local hangout and they have some good food in there. Now coming in at number two is the beautiful state of New Mexico's capital, Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Now the place to stay in Santa Fe 
is the Inn and Spa at Loretto, a four-star hotel nestled on the old Santa Fe Trail with cozy quarters, shopping, dining, and relaxation within footsteps of your hotel room door. Now moving on on what should you do, it's a must to see the Miraculous Staircase. So if you haven't heard of the Miraculous Staircase story, the story goes way back in the 1800s, there was a church being built and the nuns had built this loft for their choir. So you get this beautiful sound of their voices in the chapel. Makes sense. But they didn't have a way, an easy way of getting up and down from there. Their only option was to have like a stand up ladder and they were trying to figure out a way to build a staircase. So the story goes that they prayed and prayed and prayed for nine days to God and to St. Joseph, how they could possibly figure out how to find somebody who could find the right construction to build this staircase in this chapel right, from the because, ground floor to the loft. Because no one in the town at the time had the carpenterial skills to do such a That's staircase. A yeah. Right. So that there was, was that just, was the issue. That right? was the issue. There was nobody in town who could make this happen. They just said it was impossible with the construction of the building and that they were just stuck with a stand up ladder to go up and down to. Can't be done. Well, on the ninth day of their prayers, a mysterious straggler just comes rolling into town, comes to the Loretto Chapel and says, I'm here to build your staircase. Okay. <laughs> okay. But he had some kind of weird conditions about doing this. He only worked at night and he said he couldn't have anybody watch him perform his work. Totally agreeable. Totally agreeable. Basic contractor stuff. So I'm not sure how long he worked on this staircase, but basically they left him to do his work. Nobody ever saw him build it. And then as soon as he came into town, he was gone. He left without a thanks or payment. And so when they walked into the chapel and saw what he had done, that's what leads us to the miraculous staircase because it was used with some lumber that I think even some carpenters to this day don't even know what type of wood it is, as well as the staircase does two complete 360s with no support beams whatsoever. Yeah, so the entire staircase is kind of kind of an optical illusion almost. It doesn't seem to make sense how it was constructed with mystery wood, like you said, and also it was not made with any nails or glue at all. That's right. So there's a big mystery behind how did it even build this? Who was it? They still don't know to this day, right? Right. Check it out. See if you can make sense of it. Something else that's an absolute must do in Santa Fe is going to Ski Santa Fe. Shred. Set perfectly in the forested mountains of Santa Fe is the Ski Resort of Dreams, a clean resort with great runs, awesome snow, and all the gnar you can shred to your heart's content. I can shred a little gnar. You really can. You're naturally really good. Wow. If you missed last week's episode, go check it out. We took you on a Let's Get Physical segment and took you along our journey of skiing through Santa Fe. There was a ton of snow in Santa Fe. And High it was, quality. It was great really quality. nice, crunchy, shredding snow. No, I mean, we lived in Lake Tahoe for a couple years, and that's where we learned how to snowboard. We thought we were kind of spoiled to great snow, but this place reminded us a lot of, of skiing and snowboarding in Lake Tahoe. It really did, but minus the crowd, so that way, made it even better. Minus way the crowd. I mean, there was nobody there. That was the best part. It really was. Tahoe, it gets crowded no matter where you go. Lastly, where you should eat in Santa Fe is definitely once again at the Inn and Spa at La it is a fine dining restaurant called Luminaria. It gives you an amazing high-class dining experience, but without the heavy price tag that comes along with it. You also get an amazing view of the Loretto Chapel, where the miraculous staircase resides. So coming in at number three, we're talking about the infamous Roswell, New Mexico. We've got probably the coolest Airbnb that you'll ever Find. The coolest Airbnb, you guys. So we got to stay in a decommissioned missile silo from the 1960s, 186 feet underground. That's where we stayed and slept and ate. Located on the outskirts of Roswell, 
This 186 foot silo is completely underground and the crew bunker has been remodeled into a fully stocked apartment with all the amenities of home. Your stay comes with a full tour, giving you all the details of the history of the site and you get full access to explore the silo and have a truly unforgettable night totally apart from the outside world. It was such a blast getting to experience that and if you want to see our full experience, check this video right here because we did do a lot. It's too much to fit right here in the show, but it was the coolest experience. And it just so happens to be in Roswell, New Mexico, which in itself, it's kind of creepy. It's kind of weird. And as far as what to do in Roswell, well, you got to check out downtown Roswell and you got to check out the UFO spacewalk. This is probably one of the coolest, like kind of cheesy attractions that you can go to. It's basically, it's a fun interactive alien experience that you can take with the whole family. It's a black lit maze that you have to wander through. The kids had a blast and they actually give you little laser blasters to shoot stuff even though it's fake but if, if you're if you're going with the family that's a cool spot to check out and if you're wondering where to eat in roswell surprisingly you got to go to mcdonald's Ro Mickey D's, baby. roswell mcdonald's is the coolest mcdonald's probably in the world they fully commit to the alien theme and even have a flying saucer shaped dining room and play place and the quality of the food is actually better than most mcdonald's they really do take pride in that place so go check that out you won't be disappointed you can take some pictures there as well it's pretty sweet and finally at number four is taos new mexico now the place to stay in taos new mexico is actually right here where we've been at bringing this podcast episode to you. We're there, man. A breathtaking casita nestled on two acres of land with breathtaking 360 mountain views with a beautiful open layout with two bedrooms and two bathrooms, plus some amazing luxurious amenities. There's also a movie theater game room, perfect for kids and families. They also have a barbecue gazebo for all the late night cookouts. If you're looking to really get those New Mexico views and really get a grasp of the beauty of this place. It's not all desert here. We are surrounded by mountains. There's snow on the ground. And if you want to get away, if you want to like get away, this is a great place to get away, to unplug, to unwind, and just soak in the magical beauty of New Mexico nature. So moving on to what to do. So when you visit Taos, you obviously have to go to Taos Ski Valley. This is even more of a ski town than Santa Fe, I would say. Yeah, so in New Mexico, you've got multiple options. Fresh pow pow, bro. This is where you're gonna wanna eat when you're visiting Taos, New Mexico. You're definitely gonna wanna check out the Azteca Mexican Grill. With a gorgeous courtyard and centered fireplace, the vibe is on point. They offer authentic New Mexican options, always choose the green chili, as well as simple options for kids. Those are definitely the top four places in New Mexico that you should put on your travel bucket list. So we have cultivated our own scale in order to rate the places that we have been. And our entire family has rated New Mexico in its entirety. We've come up with an adventurous spirit podcast scale called the ASP scale. First coming in with the A stands for adventure. Now this one to 10 scale is going to be rating what there is to do. All the places that we've been, everything that we've done, we're asking everybody what they would rate the adventure of New Mexico. Secondly, the S stands for spirit. And this is just kind of the overall feeling, the overall vibe that you personally get when you are somewhere. What's the vibe like? The P stands for people, which represents the food and culture a place has to offer. So we sat down with each of our kids, starting with our youngest, Cade. He gave an adventure score of New Mexico, 10 out of 10. I think he's really, really liked it here. I don't think he understands what we were asking him. <laughs> <laughs> but he, but really, he answered nonetheless. He really does like it here. Cade gave the spirit score a 10 as well. So he's feeling pretty dandy. He's on top of the world. And he gave the people score, the food, and the culture a 5 out of 10. So Cade's overall ASP score of New Mexico is an 8.5. That's not bad. Not bad, not bad. Moving on to Casey, our oldest son. He gave New Mexico an adventure score of 8. Yeah. Uh, moving on to spirits, Casey gave New Mexico a spirit score of 7 out of 10. And finally, he gave the people score a 6 out of 10. So overall, Casey's ASP score for New Mexico is a solid 7. Again, 
Not bad. Not bad at all. Do you want to say yours so I can take a break from talking? For me, I gave the adventure score a solid nine. A lot of my favorite things to do, like snowboarding, mountain biking, just generally hiking, just being outside, not being buried in snow, it's good for me. So I gave it a solid nine. For the spirit, I also gave it a solid nine just because I, I feel at home here. It feels good to me. We grew up in the desert in California, so it feels homey to me and it just feels good. So as far as the people, the food, and the culture, I also gave it a nine. I love Mexican food and I love New Mexican food and the green chili is so good. Get it on everything you order here. So you gave New Mexico a solid nine out of 10 based on our ASP scale. Right. I mean, and we're just starting this adventure. Um, we've got a lot more places to go and who knows what's going to happen. So I, I couldn't give anything a 10 so far. I know that New Mexico is always going to rank high for me. So solid nine. Love it. And for me, I gave New Mexico an adventure score an eight out of 10. I say it's pretty up there. There is quite a lot to do. I would just say I feel like there are some things that I feel like I wish I could do here. You like water. I like water. That's exactly what ga- That's made what me thought. give it an eight. Otherwise, I probably would say nine out or a ten. Yeah, get a lake, guys. But there's no, there's not a lot of places for me to go jump in. I know we haven't been to everywhere, and New Mexico does have some water, but not I mean, a ton. There's some pretty big rivers here, but you ain't jumping in them. It's definitely not the PNW. Right. So for the adventure score, I gave it a good eight out of ten. Respect that. For the spirit score, the overall feeling that I have when I'm here, I also gave it an 8 out of 10 because I feel I feel really good. I really love it, but I think my heart just longs for a more uh, like luscious, water-filled environment. You're a mermaid at heart, right? <laughs> I'm a mermaid at heart. Sue me. Lastly, the people score, the food and the culture of the overall people. Now, I might be a little tainted with this one since I'm actually having to work here as well and deal with a lot of people in the society in all different kinds of mental states. So you know better than most. So I know the good and I know the bad. It's a 6.5 for me. So altogether, my ASP score for New Mexico is a 7.6. Okay. Not bad, not bad. So we've thoroughly enjoyed it here. We hope you do too. We hope we've given you some valuable information so that you can make the most out of your next New Mexico trip. Let's go get back in the hot tub. Really? So we sure have enjoyed all that New Mexico has to offer, and we hope we've given you some ideas for your next magical getaway. Yes, indeed. It's been so amazing sharing this very first season with all of you. We cannot wait for the season premiere of the Adventurous Spirit Podcast Season 2. Make sure that you follow along and hit that subscribe button so you find out where this crazy traveling show will end up next. Remember, adventure is out there, so go on and embrace your adventurous Adventurous spirit. spirit. Cheers. Cheers. See you on the next one. Woo.